cohort of accused killer Ali Muhammad Brown fled his barbershop in Seattle and ended up on a battlefield in Somalia. In November 2006, the Seattle FBI received a phone call from war-torn Somalia. It was fugitive Ruben Shumpert, Ali Muhammad Brown's pal from the Crescent Cuts Barbershop. Former Joint Terrorism Task Force agents David Rubicam and David Gomez remember that call. It was just a taunting type of phone call that uh, your, your efforts failed. I win, you lose, I'm gone, and you can't find me. You may have indicted and arrested me, but I'm here in, in Somalia, and I'm fighting the good fight with the Shabaab, and uh, I intend on raining down terror on you and your family. Two years later, Reuben Shumpert was dead. Reuben Shumpert died in Somalia in a missile attack. I believe it was directed by United States forces on a villa where he was living. One of the confirmations of, of Reuben's death came from Shabab itself in their publications, where they eulogized him as a wonderful foreign fighter from America. Brown was out on the streets getting arrested again and again. We confirmed he served 84 days of his two-year bank fraud sentence stemming from the Rainier Valley Roundup. And we found more. David Rubencam remains certain about the radical motivation of the imam from the Abu Bakr Mosque, Sheikh Ibrahim. This guy is an extremist, religious zealot of the worst kind. He went to the University of al Madina in Saudi Arabia. He was uh, educated as an Islamic religious scholar. He had been uh, and was still a member of the uh, Ogadeni National Liberation Front and a pre-precursor to al-Shabaab called al-Itihad al-Islamia, which uh, were, we call them cousins to al-Qaeda. Today, Abu Bakr Mosque has moved from its original location, which is now an empty lot. But at the time, it was only 500 feet from the barbershop. He was over here to raise money through the Hawala system of, of money transfer to fund them overseas and to recruit people uh, to their cause, to actually go back to Somalia, take up arms. The imam was finally arrested in Seattle in late 2005 after returning from a trip to Texas. As soon as we saw who he was meeting with in Dallas, we thought, okay, you know what, enough. Three months after Shumpert disappeared, Sheikh Ibrahim was deported under his real name, Mohammed Diri, to Kenya, his country of birth. I'm glad that we dealt with it in immigration court. I think people think that terrorism cases are, are just a... a, a, a field goal in the 10-yard line, and they're really not. The best thing is to get him off our soil and get him out of here and never let him come back. Apparently, he's been busy as the leader of the United Western Somali Liberation Front. Here he is in 2010 signing a peace treaty with the Ethiopian prime minister. I wouldn't sign a peace treaty with the guy. Mohamed Diri was and remains, a, I am 100% certain, a national security threat to the United States of America or to any country in which he resides. And that's not all we found. Back in 1999, a then 15-year-old Ali Muhammad Brown may have tried to attend one of the earliest terrorist training camps on American soil in Bly, Oregon. If there's anything poison in poison, you help, you brothers, you help yourself. Abu Hamza al-Masri was uh, the original inspiration uh, of the converts that we started to investigate around 1998, 1999 with the James Uj uh, Ujama case. This is Dog Cry Ranch. It was a dream of a Seattle entrepreneur, James